What is up? Happy New Year's, guys. Today, I want to talk about New Year, New You. What is the biggest mistake I see people make when they're doing New Year's resolutions? So, hey, everybody. Welcome to 2020. Holy shit. Wow, new decade. Ah, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of us do. So let's talk about that 2020, that new year, new me, goals and the lifestyle stuff that can sometimes create a huge challenge for us. And I want to talk about the biggest, the number one, numero, numero hashtag, uno, one, um, mistake that I see. And that is making too many changes all at once. So, we can have really big goals for the year. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. In fact, it might be a good thing. We probably need to make some really big changes in our lives if we truly want to continue progressing. I know I do, right? That's why we make goals. That's why we take this time to stop, to look at where we want to go, what we want to do with our lives, and how we're going to get there. However, I think a lot of the time, we end up looking really well at the end goal, but not necessarily the pathway to get there. And so, instead of taking small little steps each and every day, we make really big sweeping changes. As Paul would say, sweeping declaration, right? <laughs> bop, 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 bop. So we try and do too much all at once. What that ends up doing is it just leaves us burnt out. It leaves us, you know, wondering how we're going to continue doing this. So the really big caveat for all of our New Year's goals is small, simple changes. So, if we've made some big goals already, it might make sense to reassess those and start changing them into smaller goals or making smaller goals along the timeline with that bigger goal by a year's end. So maybe the goal is to lose weight. Okay, awesome. Maybe we've tried to change our completely change our diet. We've stopped drinking soda, we started eating more vegetables, we stopped doing this and that and all these other things in terms of food groups. Well, maybe it would make more sense to like back that down and say, well, maybe instead of changing my entire diet, I'll just stop drinking regular sodas and switch to diet soda. We're still making a positive impact on our calorie intake. We're still helping with our weight management stuff, okay? Um, and it's now something that's doable. We really didn't have to change that much. We just maybe need to get used to the taste change of regular soda to diet soda. Once we've accomplished that goal, we've done that for, you know, three, four weeks, however long it might take for us to get used to it, and we're feeling good about it. We're like, this doesn't bother me anymore. I don't have to think about it anymore. It's not really taking a lot of effort anymore for me to have made this change and to keep this up. Well, now, now I can look on to the next thing. Now, maybe I can start incorporating more fruits and vegetables into my diet. Now, maybe I can, you know, try and limit how much um, really calorie dense food I'm utilizing in my dietary intakes. Now, I can start maybe trying to make it to the gym once or twice a week and making sure that I allot time for that. Now I can start doing some of those other things on top of that because that is now in a maintenance phase. When we are doing life change, right? When we're doing habit change, if we're doing everything at once, it becomes very overwhelming. Like that shit's hard. It's hard to force yourself to do something that you're not used to doing. It's not a natural feeling for you. So the easier thing to do is to stay in your normal routine and start doing things one by one by one. That way we're setting ourselves up for success in terms of our habit change and how we're going about this life change and we can build that up over time, right? So move a rock, move a rock, move a rock. Next thing you know, the mountain's been moved. That's the approach that we wanna to take to health, fitness, and life change for our goals 
for the new year, for 2020, for the new fucking decade, bro. Um, sis, I don't know. But if we go into it with an all or nothing mindset, we tend to get burnt out. We tend to not make it to the finish line. And I want to see everybody make it to the finish line. It's really tough, I know, because we want it now. We want, we want to be there. We want everything to happen. It didn't take one night for us to get to where we're at today. Um, and for those of you who are feeling like you're very far away and like you have to make a lot of progress, a year goes by quickly. Trust me. <laughs> um, and next thing you know, you'll be in a completely different place than you started. Don't feel like you have to rush to the finish line here. Take your time. Do things the right way. Set yourself up for lasting success. Yes, I know a lot of people are like saying, hey, 20 pounds in 20 days, this, that, and the other thing, like get results fast. Great. That's great. If you can get results fast, that's wonderful. But can you keep those results? Can you continue that on the long term? Can that be something that you'll see yourselves doing in three months, six months, 12 months, four years, right? I know that was a weird jump to make from one year to four years, but that's what I did. That's what we want to look at. We want to look at the long term sustainable processes that we can utilize to keep ourselves not only accountable, but successful. Successful being probably the main one. So if you're not working out at all, you're not getting any exercise, you're very inactive and sedentary, maybe start making time to do something once or twice a week. It's not going to kill you, right? Take it easy, work your way in. It's going to be realistic in terms of time investment and then as that starts you know, teetering off in terms of results you're getting, now, now you can start making some more strides to increase that. Once that feels good, like, hey man, you know what? I really like it. Like, I'm digging this whole exercise thing. I got some endorphins going on. Like, I feel good about it. Like, uh, uh, this is great. I want to do this more. And hey, now we're not only like it's forcing ourselves. We don't have to force ourselves anymore to do it, but we're enjoying it. Like, so now it's, hey, I want to invest more time into something I'm enjoying, something that's feeling good, that's making me feel better. Not, oh man, I have to make time to go work out something I dread. And that can be a really big thing, right? It's not only just the investment of what we have to do, but how we perceive it and how we look at it too. So the huge moral of the story, everybody out there, try not to just overhaul everything all at once. That might work for a little bit, but for the vast majority of people, it is not going to be sustainable for the long term. And what we want is long term change so that you're healthier and happier and feeling better for the rest of your life, not just a few months into the year. So remember, small changes, get them down, make them part of your routine, have that be an upkeep thing, then make some more small changes and just continue. Before you know it, everything's gonna look different. So that's all I got, guys. Happy fucking New Year. Merry 2020. Festivus for the rest of us.